Genesis Apologetics soldiers on in its crusade to convince Christian teens that evolution just isn't worth the peer-reviewed paper it's written on. Here we have what appears to be a captive audience of teens being given a creationist 101 lesson on the most celebrated of all hominid fossil finds, Lucy, the three million year old skeleton of one of the earliest examples of an upright walking human ancestor. So, can this entry from the Debunk Evolution series really dismantle 40 years of scientific analysis of the Lucy skeleton in just a few minutes? Sadly, more than half of students will reject their faith by the time they're done with college. And when we talk to students, it turns out that they believe that evolution is true and that they can no longer trust God's word. We also did a nationwide survey and asked students what they believed was the best proof for evolution. And they said human evolution, the transition from an ape-like creature to modern day humans. And of course, the biggest icon of evolution is Lucy. So tonight, guys, we're gonna talk about Lucy. Are you guys ready to go? Yeah. Awesome. First, I want to show you a picture of how they portray Lucy. You guys have probably seen things like this. Have you guys seen this kind of thing in like a museum or maybe a textbook or something like that? Sometimes they even portray Lucy with an entire family and it makes it sound like they've got tons of fossils of Lucy. But do you want to see what they actually discovered? Okay, Dr. Donald Johansson found Lucy in 1974 and there she is. There's the complete set of Lucy. Now, watch out for this. We're going to see lots of shots of the students looking amused and even laughing in this video. And this is just the beginning. This creationist teacher is making out that 40% of a fossilized skeleton is pitiful. But 40% of any fossil is actually pretty darn good. Fossilization is a very rare process and Lucy, as she came to be known, was the most complete early human ever found up to that point. Now please understand that these fossils were not actual bones, but a bunch of fragments that they glued back together. And then they put them into the skeleton, which you can see is only 40% complete. And while this is all they found of the original Lucy skeleton, they believe that she's part of a larger group of fossils known as the Australopithecus afarensis. And they believe that they found 400 specimens of them. And I want to show you a picture of how they've portrayed those 400 Australopithecines. Here's an actual documentary that they've posted on YouTube, and it was produced by the BBC. And what do we see? Skeletons walking towards the screen. And many people come away from that believing that the 400 specimens they have are complete skeletons. The clip mentioned is from a short video from the BBC Earth YouTube channel. But what he doesn't tell you are the details given here about significant fossil bone finds that helped paleoanthropologists forensically piece together what this species looked like. When we found these fossils at Hadar older than three million years, foot bones, hand bones, we've got two complete skulls, we've got lots of limb bones, we've got vertebra, ribs, uh, just about representing just about every bone in the body. And when you look at it as a whole, there's an amalgam of more primitive and more derived features that had not been seen before. We now have 400 specimens of Lucy species Australopithecus afarensis, named after the Afar region. But in reality, here's what they found, is they have found bone fragments. Now, this is the Hadar collection, and I should mention that they've got other fragments as well, but you notice that all of this fits on one table. And I should also mention that quite a few of these are just teeth or parts of teeth. And yet they try and make it appear as if though they have complete skeletons. Well, look, here's the same photo of the Hadar collection, the complete photo. Sure, he said there were more pieces than shown here, but why crop off the numerous skulls and skeletal parts that clearly show just how much has been found? More than enough to build up an anatomical reconstruction of what Australopithecus afarensis really looked like. Now remember, they started studying Lucy about 40 years ago and hundreds of scientists have been investigating this, uh, these fossils and yet just recently they discovered that this piece right here actually belongs to a cousin of the baboon. It doesn't even fit into the Lucy fossils and yet they portray as if they know everything about this, this group of fossils and they didn't even realize that they had a wrong bone. Yes, this is known in the scientific field as a mistake. Creationists sleep on any errors within the study of evolution and shine a spotlight on them as though they're enough to destroy the evolutionary model completely. How many mistakes do you think have been made over the centuries in the study of medicine and surgical techniques? 
What's important is that the errors are corrected. Baboon vertebrae were a close match to that of Lucy's species. Also, there was no sign of a baboon skeleton at the site where Lucy was discovered in 1974. But the small piece of vertebra may have washed in and mixed in with Lucy's remains at some time in the past. The anthropologist who discovered the uncertain piece of vertebra stressed that the fragment has not yet been identified 100% as that of a baboon, and that the other 88 fossil fragments belonging to Lucy's skeleton are correctly identified. Science admits its errors, unlike creationists who insist that their holy book has no errors. Uh, and here's my question to somebody who thinks that the Bible can err in history or geography or psychology. How many errors can an omniscient mind make? Zero. How many mistakes can an omniscient mind make in history, in psychology, in geology? None. Recently, some other scientists have said that Lucy may not have even been a female. They don't even know what gender she was. I think that if a specimen had been nicknamed Lucy for the past 40 years, it's probably because the data points to it being a female. Half of Lucy's pelvis was found and reconstructed by simply mirroring that half, showing the birth canal of a female. Also, Lucy's species, Australopithecus afarensis, are known for being sexually dimorphic, that is, the males and females easily distinguishable. Out of the 400 specimens found, males tend to be larger, indicating that Donald Johansson's discovery was most likely female. Now, they believe that Lucy walked upright. That's why they want to call her an ape-man fossil. That's why they say that she was in the line of human evolution. And one of the main reasons they believe this is because of Lucy's pelvis. Now, when they originally found the pelvis, they realized it was flared out like a chimpanzee, which means she couldn't have walked upright. Uh, so in order to walk upright, you need a pelvis more like this. However, they also decided that the hip was damaged and that it needed to be repaired. So they took a saw and reshaped it and made it look more like a human pelvis, allowing her to walk upright. But a more recent reconstruction has shown that her gluteal muscles were actually like those of an ape, which would have made her walking unstable. So even if she did do some upright walking, it wasn't like a human. Now we come to the creationist's smoking gun, proof that Lucy was altered to seem more human-like. What creationists don't tell you is that Lucy's discoverers expected the pelvis to turn out more ape-like. But let's hear it from Johansson himself. Lucy turned old predictions upside down. It was thought the missing link would be a smart ape that walked on all fours. Here was the skeleton of a creature that looked like it could walk like us, but with many ape-like features. The ape that stood up, it was a revolutionary idea. We needed Owen Lovejoy's expertise again, because the evidence wasn't quite adding up. The knee looked human, but the shape of her hip didn't. Superficially, her hip resembled a chimpanzee's, which meant that Lucy couldn't possibly have walked like a modern human. But Lovejoy noticed something odd about the way the bones had been fossilized. When I put the two parts of the pelvis together that we had, this part of the pelvis has pressed so hard and so completely into this one that it caused it to be broken into a series of individual pieces which were then fused together in later fossilization. After Lucy died, some of her bones lying in the mud must have been crushed or broken, perhaps by animals browsing at the lake shore. Uh, this has caused the two bones, in fact, to fit together so well that they're in an anatomically impossible position. The perfect fit was an illusion that made Lucy's hip bones seem to flare out like a chimp's. But all was not lost. Lovejoy decided he could restore the pelvis to its natural shape. He didn't want to tamper with the original, so he made a copy in plaster. He cut the damaged pieces out and put them back together the way they were before Lucy died. 
It was a tricky job, but after taking the kink out of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. If this was some sort of deception, why would it feature so prominently in a well-respected documentary series like Nova? The pelvis aside, Lucy's leg bones show distinct traits of upright walking, including angled femur, a lipped kneecap, and large rounded ends to cope with added weight that results from shifting from four limbs to two. In fact, Lucy's genus, Australopithecus, has given us numerous fossil examples of pelvises which are all evidence of an upright walking class of hominid, including Australopithecus africanus and Australopithecus sediba. And by the way, Genesis Apologetics, scientists don't believe, they conclude based on evidence, so please start projecting your own Christian vocab onto science. Now, another reason that some evolutionists say that she walked like a human is because they found footprints in Tanzania called the Laetoli footprints. And they were made by a creature that had feet that seemed a lot like a human. And because they were supposed to be around the same age as Lucy, they decided that the only creature that could have been around to make those footprints was Lucy. No paleoanthropologist has ever said that the fossil footprints found in the Laetoli region of Tanzania were made by Lucy herself. In fact, three individuals have left tracks there. The shape of the feet and the length of the toes show that these footprints were made by an early human, and Australopithecus afarensis were the only hominins in this region at that time period. How do we know this? Fossils of Lucy's species were found close by and in the same ancient layer of volcanic ash, indicating that these creatures existed in this area at the same time the footprints were left. Okay, as you can see on the skull of Lucy, this is called the foramen magnum right here. And they've actually discovered what these are like from other Australopithecines that they've discovered. And the spine enters at an angle like this. Well, that allows her to walk on all fours, which is again, very ape-like. If you look at a human, you can see that we're more at a 90 degree angle, okay? But she was like this. Again, just another attribute of being an ape. Lucy's species all have the foramen magnum, the cranial hole where the spine fits, at the bottom of the skull, rather than further back as apes do. Like humans, Lucy's species had a more vertical spine, not one that curved backwards like a knuckle-walking ape, as is suggested by Genesis Apologetics. Okay, one thing that we should also point out about the skull is that from the Australopithecines, the other fossils they found, they found out that their inner ears were shaped like the inner ears of apes, our inner ear is completely different from the Australopithecines, and that inner ear allows us to walk upright. The semicircular canals of the inner ear help us with balance and orientation. In 1994, anatomist Dr. Fred Spohr compared the canals of modern primates to the ancient Australopithecines. Taking into consideration the bipedal traits of this group, he recognized that these creatures lived in trees as well as walked on two legs upon the ground. The point is that Lucy and her kind were becoming more like us, but still had the attributes of apes. Okay, she had many ape-like uh, attributes. As a matter of fact, here's the bone that enters the wrist down here, and you can see the rounded part actually allowed the wrist to lock into place. And that's what we see with chimps and apes, is they have the ability to lock their hands so they can walk on all fours. Now, if this was a human um, bone, you would see that it was more flat and straight because our wrists don't walk like that. So once again, this is great proof that she was actually just an ape and not a human ancestor. Again, no scientist has ever claimed that Lucy and her species were fully human. The pelvises, backs, and limb proportions of Lucy's genus show that they were bipeds. Their relatively long arms and the ridge near the wrist are features left over from knuckle-walking ancestors in Lucy's evolutionary past. Okay, another thing that they found when they looked at Lucy is they found out that she has curved fingers. And it looks like her hands were designed to climb up trees, okay? And those are completely different than human hands. Nope, I'm sorry. Members of Lucy's genus have much more human hands than is suggested here, and are not as long and curved as, say, a chimpanzee's. Remember, Lucy was partially arboreal, partially groundwalking. 
Lucy's hands show an intermediate stage between ape-like and human-like. Though no hominin has been found that is conveniently halfway between ape and human, since body parts evolve at different rates. The species Artipithecus ramidus did, however, have more ape-like curved fingers, suggesting much more time living in trees and suspending from branches. As this species is an evolutionary ancestor of Lucy, this is to be expected. All right, I want to show you another picture of Lucy. And uh, what do you notice about Lucy? What's different about her eyes? Yes. They're white. They're white. Her eyes are white. Now, are apes, do they have white eyeballs? Matter of fact, did they go out and dig up white eyeballs? Did they go, hey, look, we've got eyeball fossils, <laughs> right? Impossible. How did they know that her eyes were white? Well, it's because they're trying to portray her to be more human-like, right? As a matter of fact, when you look at apes, you can see that their eyes are actually brown and not white. So you can tell that they're just trying to make it look like she's more human-like than she really is. Of course, no one has ever claimed to have dug up eyeballs, nor is anyone claiming that the sclera, or whites of eyes, of early hominins were definitely white like ours, just that it is highly probable. Early humans benefited from having eye whites when it came to communicating by way of visual cues, such as in hunting scenarios. As Lucy is an intermediate species, it is very likely that eye pigmentation changed the more time they spent on the ground, and began using more complex forms of communication. Okay, now the other thing that you notice is when you take a look, they portrayed her so she looks like she's thinking about something. Do you know what she's thinking about? Bananas. <laughs> so again, they're trying to make her look more human-like to make it appear like she's evolving to become a human being. Now, do you want to see a picture of what she probably looked like? So here's a picture of probably what she looked like as just an ape. So, look at what we have here, just a throwaway line and a photo that these teens are expected to take on face value as the accepted scientific reconstruction of Lucy. Well, a quick image search shows that this photo comes from only one source, the Answers in Genesis website, the largest creationist online source and owners of the infamous Creation Museum in Kentucky, an edifice devoted to the biblical view of how life came about on Earth, headed by Ken Ham. And it is here that you will find their reconstruction of Lucy, which ignores all the evidence of upright walking and simply portrays her as an ape. I guess Donald Johansson and all those who have studied Lucy for the past four decades have got it completely wrong. All right, so seeing the evidence tonight, what do you think? Was Lucy on her way to becoming human or was she just an ape? I would agree with you. And listen, for more evidence against evolution, I invite you to come to our website, debunkevolution.com. Organizations like Genesis Apologetics are doing young people a great disservice, using misdirection and straw man arguments to undermine their understanding of evolution, human origins, and science in general. One thing is clear, the leaders of these organizations have done a lot of research into this subject. They know the science holds up, but have to find ways to shoot holes in it, hoping that young minds won't know the difference. If staying strong in their faith is so important to these believers, why go to such Herculean efforts to dismantle evolutionary science? Isn't faith about believing without evidence? One final point. Using deception to keep people in the dark is hardly biblical, not even when it's for a supposed greater good. Your Bible has one or two things to say about that.